I beg your pardon, could you help me find a friend of mine, please? <gasps> Careful, you could have squashed me! My name is Naomi. I'm a young cockroach, 19 in roach years. In all the time I've lived with my tribe, I've never experienced terror or a single incident of cruelty from our human host. I'm completely wiped out. You need to spend more time at the gym. Face it, you'll never get stronger if you don't put in the effort to build yourself up. I quit the gym. You quit? What did you do that for? Too much work. It's a waste of my time. Anyway, what's the point? I'm never going to be one of those cockroaches who spends his life with his nose to the ground scrambling around looking for food. Stop it, Ichiro. You sound just like a pig. <laughs> Listen, Naomi, you and I have a lot of things to talk about at dinner tonight. Which, if Sato's on schedule, should be northern Italian with a delicate tomato and basil sauce. Last night was Chinese, the day before that was steak and potatoes. So if I know Sato, tonight will be pasta. <coughs> Speak of the devil. Evening, Mr. Sato. Let's go. Bye. I went out 
out looking today, and I think I found the perfect place for us. The south wall's made of glass, so the sun comes in and it's bright and airy. Hanging plants completely cover the ceiling. It's beautiful. I can hardly wait to move in there after we get married. Even my father liked it. He said it's a good investment and he'd be glad to help with the payments. What's wrong? Uh, did I say something to upset you? If so, I'm sorry. No. Mm -mm. You're not to blame. It's me. Hey, you two lovebirds! So, Chiro, I hear you're on the fast track. A promotion to second assistant? You must have done something special to impress the big boss. He was impressed with my father's connection. Doesn't surprise me. That's how it usually works. Marvelous pasta sauce. It's heaven. Look at those two. We could be eating out of a dumpster for all they care. <laughs> They're missing a great meal. You can say that again. This ketchup's delicious. Gee, Takashi, no wonder you never get ahead. You have no taste, no vision, no appreciation of the finer things that make life worth living. Like good friends, you mean? Sorry about the noise, but don't worry, we'll be closed in about ten minutes. Please, bear with us, Mr. Seto. You youngsters are a disgrace. Just take a look at yourselves. You dishonor our cockroach ancestors, stumbling around in the open like this. And now, drunk now, beside. Elder, take it easy. You're absolutely right, of course, but it's late and we're both tired. I'm sure these folks didn't mean to insult anyone with their behavior. Now, straight home, everyone, and remember, be careful. Stay with me tonight. Please. I wish you could be here to see this, Naomi. Soon, it will all come to pass, very soon. I know how much this kind of thing upsets you. The whole fabric of our society is unraveling and it's leaving us old timers in the dust. Hmm? Oh, hello, Gosuke. Master, shouldn't you be in bed? Come along with us. It's much too cold for you to be standing around in the night air. If anything should happen to you, this tribe wouldn't know which way to turn. Hmm? You should be in bed yourself, Seto-san. 
Remember, tomorrow's an important day. Where do you suppose he came from? Uh, do, you, uh, do you think he's all right? Um, hello? Uh, uh, hello? Are, are you... Uh, uh, do, do. As I stared at him, I knew he was one of them. A roach from the tribe that lived across the field. I had never been there. But I knew all about their society. Grandfather's stories had painted a vivid picture over the years. His world was quite different from mine. A nation in a constant struggle for survival. A permanent battleground where roaches had to prove themselves in daily combat. A truly frightening existence. And yet, I found myself strangely attracted to Hans. He had such an air of mystery and sadness about him. Ichiro would waste no time in turning our visitor over to the authorities for questioning. I think he sensed my interest from the very beginning. Ichiro? Hmm? Tell me what's happened. Have they placed Hans under arrest? Ah, don't be silly. Why would they do that? I heard they were going to grant him refugee status. The whole affair's very hush-hush. Top secret, if you know what I mean. Did you hear anything about how he was injured? He's been in combat. Combat? With a cat? With a human. <gasps> A human like Mr. Sato? Why? I don't know. I figure he must have done something really terrible to provoke him. Not to change the subject, honey, but have you chosen your wedding dress yet? I don't want to bug it, but you're going to run out of time. I wanted Parsley to go with me, but she's been busy. The dressmaker's getting antsy. She needs to start soon. <clears throat> Leader. You're Kichiro. Isn't that right? Ichiro, sir. Oh, yes, of course, Ichiro. How stupid of me. So how are you, my boy? I'm doing very well, thank and you. And Naomi, beautiful as ever. Thank you. So let's sit and talk. I hear you've been asking about our visitor. Well, yes. The timing of his arrival is actually most fortunate. Because it's a holiday? Because tomorrow's Armistice Day, and he'll be a good role model. Huh? Okay, stand by. Settle, everyone. We're going live in five, four, three, two, one. Good morning. Welcome to our broadcast. We're gathered here, as I'm sure you know, to celebrate Armistice Day as we do every year. Three generations ago, our great war came to an end. Now we take this opportunity to recall our glorious history, to learn from the lessons of the past, to avoid these mistakes in the future. This is particularly important for our children. 
With us in the studio today, as always, to mark this most formal occasion, is our great leader. To my fellow citizens, greetings one and all. In the spirit of this joyous celebration, I'm sure you won't mind if I address you by your nickname, Sage. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're a little short on time, folks. Moving right along, our great leader will now deliver his annual Armistice Day address. For many of us here, there was a time when life was nearly impossible. Man and cockroach were bitterly divided by deep hatreds and misunderstanding. See, we cockroaches were despised as invaders. Eventually, the day came when the humans refused to accept our presence, when the happiness of the Hosono tribe was disrupted by our innocent pursuit of food. The resulting war was a disaster for our tribe. Many brave roaches died. But then, miraculously, the other side retreated, and the sounds of battle were stilled. Standing in the midst of these ruins, I was struck by the realization that peaceful coexistence between our tribes was the only hope for the future. And peace finally did come to our world, thanks to our savior, Saito-san. In our darkest hour, he appeared, drove out our enemies, and treated us with the dignity of comrades. Saito-san, we make to you this sacred pledge. Never again shall we disturb the peace that exists between the tribe of man and the tribe of cockroach. Hear this. Past indiscretions by our citizens will not be repeated. Our devotion to peace is heartfelt and signals a new era of friendly relations. Pay heed. Today, the members of our tribe enjoy the fruits of a prosperous and peaceful land. But we're lucky. Elsewhere in the world, not all roaches are able to live in peace and tranquility with their human hosts. As proof, I'd like to present a young warrior. You'll see he's a battle-scarred fugitive from a war-torn land. And his presence offers some sobering thoughts on life as our ancestors knew it. In our earlier conversation, you claimed that members of your tribe are being massacred. Isn't that true? Yeah. Can you give us some idea of the daily casualty figures? Is it in the hundreds? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so many. On top of that, you mentioned you had evidence of brutality? Yeah. Crushings, poison gas, and senseless mutilations taking place on a huge scale, turning their world into a nightmarish combat zone. What a horror. Hans, I know this is hard, but would you show the audience your battle scars? Here. Oh, that looks so dreadful. Get a close-up. Zoom in till you feel the picture. Gee, that's awful. Let this serve as a reminder of the tragic costs of war. And now, one final word. Let us give thanks to Saito-san.
What's wrong? Don't you love Ichiro anymore? I'm not sure. We've been together so long we finish each other's sentences. But he's so gentle, so loving. Hmm. Look, a pack of toilet roaches on the make. They're all so crude. They come down here every day looking for girls covered in shit. You'd think they'd have something better to do with their time. Naomi, don't tell anyone, but I'm giving birth next month. What? Not again. I've never had babies with Yasu before. Gosh, you're going to die giving birth one of these times. And I've yet to have my first litter. I wish I was pregnant. Good evening, Grandfather. It's me, Naomi. Are you busy? I wanted to ask you... <gasps> oh, my heavens! Hans, what are you doing here? I thought the authorities had big plans for you. Keep your voice down. <gasps> but why? Please wait for me in the kitchen. That's all I know. Goodbye for now. Hans! Hans! Oh. His mission is done. He's going back. <gasps> back there? Why? Why must he go back to a living hell? Duty. He'll risk his life to return to his home. I'm confused. Duty? After Hans had left, Grandfather came out and told me a story. It was about my grandmother, who had passed away years before. He said she was 19 when the Hosono War came to an end. She appeared after having made a long journey, all by herself. When she met Grandfather, she was already with child. And like Hans, as it turned out, she was from a tribe that lived across the field, a tribe that lived under siege in a war-ravaged land. It was then I knew I had to cross that field and be with Hans. Have you seen Naomi? Nope, not today. She's been kind of moody, spending a lot more time alone. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Naomi, will you at least come and check it out? What's the matter? You don't like the place? That's not the problem. Naomi!
Well, little girl, what are you doing way out here? Ew, a talking turd. Are you prejudiced against droppings? Uh, um, well, no, it's just that I never expected... Sure. No, really. Everybody says that until they step in it. I don't suppose you're looking for that chap who just passed by here a few moments ago, are you? You mean Hans? I've been trying to find him. Oh? Well, I guess this is your lucky day, then. He went that way, to the right. Naomi's run away? But where? I don't know. She can't just pick up and leave this way. The wedding is all arranged. The invitations have been sent out. Sorry.
without a clue. Some careless idiot. Our advance warning system must have failed. Everyone, prepare to move out. Yeah, coming out! Battalion 1, you will attack the first target. Company T, target 2. Hans! Yeah! Your men will capture target 3. All troops begin deployment on my command. Move out!
Time's up. Move out. Take what you can and head for home. Quickly. some for the others. What is it, Hans? Commandant. With your permission, I request the honor of leading the next attack. You're much too valuable to be sacrificed in a losing battle. Request is denied. My fellow roaches, today we face a cataclysmic crisis. Once again, greedy humans are attempting to withhold food from us, just as they have for millions of years. They were not content to simply throw us out of the Garden of Eden. Now they are on a mission to destroy us! Through all the centuries of conflict, we roaches as a species have never killed a single human being. Not one. So why is man obsessed with the idea that he has the right to annihilate us, to commit genocide on an entire race? I'll tell you, it's because man fears what he does not understand. <laughs> It's obvious to any intelligent observer that God chose the roach to inherit the world. We are much more adaptable than man. We can live where man cannot. We are able to eat food that would turn man's stomach and sicken him. Most important, our race is in tune with the great forces of nature. We know who we are. We roaches have established an unbroken chain of genealogy that transcends the ages, and we are proud of the purity of our species. And we will fight back. For every hundred that are killed, we'll breed 10,000 reinforcements. And for every 10,000 lost, a million more will rise in their stead. I give you my solemn oath, we roaches shall prevail. Captain Hans. Off duty. I'm scared. The terror you have to live with every day. Horrendous. Awful. I'm scared. All the time.
Hans went into battle every day. Many brave roaches died. But Hans was lucky. Somehow he always managed to survive, just as he had since the day we first came together. Each night when he returned, he'd whisper to me, I'm alive. I'm still alive. I'm sure Naomi will be back soon. I'm not calling off the wedding, and that's that. She must have a good reason. I know her. Listen, Ichiro. I think you're probably right, but my staff plans to attend that wedding. They say you have a lot on the ball. If she does leave you standing at the altar, you're going to look pretty foolish, right? Well, then, I'll have to quit. Oh, come on. Face it. She isn't worth sacrificing your whole career. Call it off now. Save you and your family from the public humiliation. No. We're going on as planned. That's absurd. <laughs> Be there on time. What? Now, wait just a minute. Think about it. I'm going to look like an idiot if I'm standing there and she doesn't show. You'll be in good company. But I'm leader of this tribe, you understand. It's bad form. Listen, old friend. Don't worry. It's not like you haven't lost face in public before. Huh? If you get my meaning. All right. Reporting is ordered, Captain. Regarding the girl, sir, I mean no disrespect, but she'll only bring us bad luck. <coughs> Time to move out.
Naomi? Naomi! Naomi! Oh! Huh? Naomi, you're home. Thank goodness. <laughs> Naomi? <laughs> Why did you leave? I'm starting to worry about this wedding. Something's wrong with Naomi. Really? Did you talk to Ichiro about it? Yeah, he says she's all right. She just got amnesia. You want to know my theory? I think she's in shock. We'd better not tell her that Parsley died giving birth last week. Absolutely right. She spooked enough already. Hey, smile. He's looking at us. Well, I heard she'd been missing for three weeks. Shh! It's being kept under wraps. Supposedly her grandfather's been gone as well. Hmm. Those two are cut from the same loaf. That's what I say. I guess you ladies heard what happened this morning. What? We found dead roaches. Three of them. Hmm. It must have been young hoodlums that did it. They have no respect for anything. That's not what the authorities think. 
Their crushed bodies were found tossed in a trash basket. From the evidence, they think it could only have been done by a human. <gasps> He probably got delayed by work. Or by a red hair. Almighty God in heaven, all-knowing Torah, Souls of our ancestors draw close. We bring before you these young ones, Naomi and Ichiro, to join them in holy matrimony in accordance with the traditions of our race. We ask your blessing on this ceremony. To begin properly, you must touch feelers. Now repeat your vows to each other. Uh, I, Ichiro, take you, Naomi, to be my wedded wife to love and to hold forever. And I, Naomi, take you, Ichiro. It's her again. Thank you for all your help, men. I won't take but a few moments. Fellow citizens. Uh, well, what can I say? Words are inadequate, but I offer condolences to the victims and their families. Our tribe has suffered a vicious and unprovoked attack. The assailant is apparently an outsider, and as far as we can determine, has left the vicinity. Also, it appears Saito-san has developed a relationship with this female, and we may be seeing more of her in the future. Why weren't we given any warning about her? There was a breakdown in communication among our perimeter guards, and unfortunately we had no reports of her entry into our territory. Now listen, tomorrow I'm going to meet with Saito and settle this issue once and for all. I pledge to you I'll make sure that this kind of thing never happens to our community ever again. Naomi! It's Hiro. You're all right. Thank goodness we thought you were one of the casualties. Naomi. Oh, Grandfather. Emergency exists. Emergency, my segmented foot. We were told the danger is past. You're out of control. You're violating our civil rights. We could be attacked any time. That's what we pay you for. You're supposed to be protecting us. <laughs> there you are. Hmm? 
So, how's he doing, hmm? Um, no change, really. He's been sitting in that chair for hours now. Good. If that's any indication, it means things are back to normal. <laughs> Relax. Come with us. Huh? But I'm on duty. Oh, give me a break. Come on, it's sports night. We'll have a good time, eh? Well, maybe just for a little bit. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Is this guy something on duty? Please. Rebecca? Isn't this great? Look at this. Tommy just loves these horses.
It was always like this when I was just a hatchling. It doesn't frighten me one bit. Scrambling for food and water is good for you. It builds character. I couldn't agree more. It'll always be like this for roaches. We're scavengers. Humans will never respect us. Mm. I don't understand why we're being treated like this. We have a right to the good life just like anyone else. <laughs> yeah, sure. Ooh. Come on, this was an isolated act of madness. Humans love cockroaches. Oh, is that so? And what numbskull talked to you? Sage himself told me that. My, my, what an astute thing for our late leader to say. Right? Sharp as a tack. Yes, he got right to the point. Of course, it's not nice to speak ill of the dead. On the other hand, I never spoke well of him when he was alive. <laughs> Why are you being so mean? Listen, babyface, this attitude problem on the part of the humans is nothing new. They've been killing us like flies since before my grandfather was born. Isn't that true, Elder? He's a frog's ass water type. You bet your feelers it is. The fact is, they can't stand anything about us, from the way we eat to the way we look. While we're on the subject, you might as well know the truth about the so-called Hosono Wars. Every part of that story was a lie from start to finish. Sage made the whole thing up. Seto was actually the head of the Hosono clan before he broke up with his wife and she moved out. Now there's a new woman in his life. And she's incited him to kill us once again, just as he did in the old days. When he was alone, he had no motivation to get rid of us. We even provided a diversion for him. But now we're in the way, and he wants to impress his new girlfriend. But how come Sage lied about everything? It was simple. He never knew the truth. Sage hid in the cellar during the entire war. When it was over, he came out and proclaimed himself the leader of the tribe. He never even met Sato until his wife had already left him. Yasu's missing. We looked all over, but he's gone. I had a very disturbing dream last night. You were in it, Ichiro. Yeah? The moon was shining down on our home. But it was a barren wasteland. You and I were the only ones left alive. All our friends, their children, their families. Everyone had been killed. to do is move in straight lines. You want to learn something? Watch a real cockroach in action. Pay attention. So, ready to go? Ready. I'm all set.
Okay. Justify a court martial. Sean Anderson, AP Network News, Washington. Yeah. She's seen him. No, she hasn't. Watch this. <laughs> Rule number one. Always use black as a cover. <gasps> Stay in the shadows. It's a simple camouflaging technique. <gasps> What's that maneuver? Just an old roach showing off. Chances out in the open. Come on! Oh, no, you're safe from here. Get as far back into the foundation as you can. We are following the correct path. We should arrive by early tomorrow morning, Commandant. We face destiny at sunrise. Be silent and heed the words of our enforcer. Comrades! From now on, you and your families shall never again feel the pain of hunger! Starting tomorrow, it will be full bellies for everyone! Yeah! Now on to victory! Yeah! Good work, Hans. By the way, congratulations on your promotion. Chiros. I think the litter belongs to Hans. Oh, likely it belongs to each of them. This is good because Ichiro is honest and Hans is strong. Listen carefully, Naomi. Tomorrow night, just as the moon rises in the evening sky, come to this shrine alone. What about you? Come alone. All right. And be at peace with yourself. 
Before you come, clear your heart and mind of all turmoil. When you pray to Torah, raise your head and say, I am Naomi, your namesake. Everybody together, stand up! We are the cockroach soldiers! We are the cockroach soldiers! Start a fight and we get bolder! Start a fight and we get bolder! One gets crossed but dead are mating! One gets crossed but dead are mating! They go down, there's hundreds mating! They go down, there's hundreds mating! But we start, there's no retreating! But we start, there's no retreating! Take the sun, you'll get the beating! Take the sun, you'll get the beating! All regiments, march! Oh my God, what's going on? It's some kind of invade. Hmm? Hey, Naomi! Naomi! You say there was no provocation. We're not capable of it. Our tribe is peace-loving. We don't know how to cope with this, but if you have any ideas, we'll be glad to provide all the help you need. I have a plan. We'll attack the humans full force, and all our fight, drive them from the area. Long live the Enforcer! And you will lead the attack, Hans. Sir, it will be done. It has been a long time, my friend. And you've come a long way. I thank you. I've come to say goodbye. Events are now in motion and my job is done. The prophecy will come to pass. Many will die. It was you who taught me never to be sentimental. The hope of your tribe lies entirely with Hans. As fate would have it. I hear God told you Hans will be the last to die. That's true. He's your only means to survive. And yet in spite of that, you neither love nor understand him. Halt! 
have a message for the Enforcer. Do you understand? He is in conference, Commander, and cannot be disturbed. This is urgent. He said no Naomi! exceptions. Naomi, stop! Naomi. So it's come down to this, total war. But you know what? I'm going to survive it. I feel certain about that. Maybe so. I hope so. Then, then it's all over. You and I can settle things between us. Hold to positions. I think they'll see us, Commander. Wait! I didn't give the order! Fool!
Naomi, I want you and Ichiro to stay here a while. Locate Hans. I must talk to him immediately. Yes, sir. You ask to see me? There is no choice. You must escape. You have to survive to carry on the fight. Uh, sir, must I leave? Yes, Hans. They've all died for your sake. Move out! your eyes and count 100. Why? Humor me. I too am called Naomi. I am your namesake. I pray to you, Torah. Hear me. I am Naomi. 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 Naomi! 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 Uh, thank goodness you're all right. Uh. <gasps> Quickly, come on.
grandmother. Listen carefully. What I have to tell you is crucial to your survival. In order to improve our breed, God has provided challenges of increasing difficulty. In this latest trial, he has allowed humans to develop deadlier and deadlier poisons. Only the fittest of the race will be able to survive exposure to these toxins, and they will provide the seed for the preservation of our species. As mankind develops new chemicals, our race must develop new levels of resistance or perish. In our previous war with the humans, I discovered that their poisons had no effect on me, and along with two strong males, I was able to survive. If you're hearing this message, war has broken out again, and most of your tribe has been destroyed. You now know that the God of all of us is unmerciful, in his decisions. Neo, you are the hope of all those who died trying to preserve our species. And like me, you must go on to fulfill your destiny and the destiny of our race. Ichiro, go and meet me near the shrine. 